Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. I am so excited for today's video, which is going to be five lessons that I've learned in five years of project panning. I started my project panning journey back in March of 2017, and that's when I started my YouTube channel as well. I had never done a project pan before. I had never really tried to actively use up my makeup, but it was something that I was curious about, and I was in the process of transitioning to trying to be more of a conscious consumer. I really wanted to transition to a cruelty-free makeup collection, and so I decided that project panning was something that I wanted to challenge myself with and I had never done it before. I never tried to in any capacity and so I've learned quite a lot through these past five years. I'm sure that you have seen me grow and change throughout these five years of posting on YouTube. It's so cringy to see those videos from the beginning. I had no idea even how my camera worked for video or anything. I didn't know anything getting into it, but I'm so happy that I did decide to start Project Panning and today I just wanted to share with you some things that I've learned throughout the years, whether you're a seasoned project panner and you can relate to these things, or if you've just started your very first project pan this year, perhaps you'll learn some insights from me. So yeah, I am so, so excited. But before we hop into today's video, I do just wanna say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, which is Ana Luisa. If you've never heard of Ana Luisa, I'm really excited to be introducing you to the brand. And if you are already familiar with them, then you know that they are such a high quality jewelry company. They are carbon neutral and water neutral, and they just offer really amazing pieces at affordable prices. I have had the really great opportunity to work with them in the past once as well. And I've had those pieces for a year and they are still in amazing shape. They have held up phenomenally and I wear them all the time. But today I wanna to share with you three new pieces that I did receive from the brand to share with you today. And you can get all of these pieces for 20% off currently. They're doing a March Madness sale and I highly recommend checking them out while these prices are on such a significant discount. So although I love all three of these pieces, I think my favorite is this necklace right here. It is such a simple and classic piece. This is the Ina necklace. I adore it. I love the way that it falls. It's just so effortless. I really think you could dress it up and pair it with, you know, something more formal or business, but you could also definitely dress it down with something super casual as like a standalone kind of piece. I think it's so beautiful, timeless, and classic. And same with these earrings as well. The hoops that I'm wearing are the Tia Medium Gold hoops. These are so amazing. I love the size of them. I feel like it is the perfect size hoop where it's not like too much drama going on, but it definitely is something eye-catching and statement. And they feel so lightweight, yet they also feel very high quality. And then in my second hole here, actually, I'm also wearing an Ana Luisa piece. I don't often wear small studs like this in my second hole, but I love the way that these pair together. And these beauties are called the Milo Malachite. They are gold with a accent of that deep emerald kind of green tone. Hence why I did the matching green liner today. I love the way that this earring pairs with the hoop, but you could of course just wear these on their own. They're just dainty and elegant and really, really special in my opinion. So check out the link at the top of my description box to shop Ana Luisa for 20% off now. And a huge thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video and a massive thank you to all of you for watching and being a part of this community so that I am granted opportunities like this one. It is so special and it is so, so exciting to me, but yeah, let's hop on into today's video. I feel like I've learned so much about myself, my makeup preferences, my makeup application, all of those sorts of things while project panning. And I do think that is extremely valuable information, my taste, my preferred tones, all of those things I've definitely learned over the past five years. However, today I'm gonna to talk about things a little bit more high level, things that I think that whether you're an experienced project panner or a brand new project panner, you can take these lessons that I've learned and hopefully use them to your advantage. So let's just chat about those five things. The first one being that makeup takes forever to use up. I truly could not grasp the fact that 
makeup takes a long time to use up previous to my project panning journey. I just had no context to understand and to really know that blushes, bronzers, highlighters, foundations, those can take literally years of active use to use up with my personal usage and with my collection as well. I have so much variety within my own collection that I don't want to just solely focus on one single product. And even if I did dedicate all my effort and energy to like one singular blush, it could still take me like a year and a half or two years to use up. I did not know that before I went into project panning. I thought, you know, I could hit pan on something in a month and finish it up in like three months. I just really had no way to gauge and to compare because I had never really used up that much makeup previously. I was using up brow gels, mascaras, sometimes lip glosses or lipsticks if they were like natural kind of colors. And that was really all that I was actually actively working my way through prior to project panning. So when I started panning and I put an entire blush palette into my project pan, I thought I would be able to use that up from March to December of 2017. And I did not even make like a singular dent in the product because that's just impossible. But I did not understand that. And it's really funny looking back on that now, but it was truly something that I just could not comprehend. And now I know whenever I select a product to focus on in a project pan, I have a little bit more of a gauge of how long things take. And through my personal experience, I've come to realize that pretty much all full size products take as long, if not longer than what is presented on the packaging in the period after opening symbol. So the, on the back of pretty much all cosmetic products, there should be a small symbol, a little graphic that has a container that's open. And then inside of that, it has a number. And that's a designation for like a kind of best before expiry date kind of symbol. And they often say three, six, 12, maybe even 24 or 18 in there. And that signifies the number of months. And honestly, through my own experience, I've come to realize that many products take longer than that period after opening time frame presents that the product will be at its best. So blushes oftentimes say 12 months, eyeshadow palettes say 12 months, and they take even longer than that. And I did not have any concept of that previous to starting project panning. That's definitely something that took me not that long to learn, but it is something that now I'm so happy that I have in my back pocket to understand and to comprehend because I really do want to work my way through the majority of products that I have in my collection, especially things that I enjoy. And while I won't be able to use them likely within that like 12, 16, 18 month period, I really do want to be more cognizant of that and more aware of that because that's when the products perform at their best. And that's when they're nice and fresh and new and exciting as well. And the next thing I've learned is just how amazing and supportive this community is. I'm so grateful that I decided to kick off my project panning journey through this avenue here on YouTube because it has been so great to meet other people who are actively trying to use up their makeup and trying to become more considerate consumers just like myself. And it is such an amazing community. Everyone here is so supportive, so encouraging, and truly, whether you're looking for someone to root you on while you're trying to use up your products or someone to talk you out of purchasing something that is you know, eye-catching but absolutely not necessary, or you're looking for some validation when you're hate panning something that you just really don't enjoy and you're looking for some validation in that and someone to sympathize with you, this community has it all. And on top of that, I just find that project panning has become even more fun for me through collaborations. So working on project panning alongside other people who are following the same kind of rules and guidelines, it has just been so fun. I really met some amazing project panners and creators through putting myself out here on YouTube, which is so scary to do. And I know that a lot of people will oftentimes push back or like hold off on posting their project pans because they're a little bit nervous, but truly, truly, 
This community has been nothing but amazing. It's so warm, welcoming, and so loving. And I honestly encourage you to definitely put yourself out there, whether you want to jump onto YouTube or Instagram, or even like your own personal blog. I highly, highly recommend it because you can connect with just so many amazing like-minded people. And I feel like through meeting people in this community, I have just learned so much more about myself and I've truly become a lot more confident in myself as well, which is so special to me. And I think so many people in this community are so open to collaborations as well. So that is another amazing aspect of this community. It's about working together to help grow each other's channels and to meet new people. And that is just so special. I have loved every moment of collaboration project pants that I've done in the past. And while this year I've decided to take a step back, I am already missing it so much. And I truly think that it is the most amazing part of this space for sure is collaborating and just working with other people and feeling that encouragement through project panning. And then the next lesson that I've learned kind of maybe sounds a little bit backwards when I'm talking about collaborations that have rules or guidelines. But the third lesson I've learned is that there really are no rules. So maybe the project has, you know, a general guideline so that everyone is falling within the theme, whether that be categories or that be, you know, number of products that you have to focus on. There really aren't any actual rules when it comes to project panning. You can definitely, you know, manipulate those guidelines and the, the outline of the project to fit what you need and what you want to accomplish through your project panning journey. So for an example, last year I was working on the Partners in Cream Project Pan. Of course, it's all about cream products. So I wasn't going to manipulate the rules by trying to, trying to throw a powder product into the project, but I wanted to make that project really work for me and optimize it. So what I did was I worked on three products as a completion goal, so to use them up entirely, but then I also worked on three products with usage goals so that I could give myself some variety and feel a sense of accomplishment as I rotated through my collection as well. And you definitely don't have to look at project panning as the ultimate goal of hitting that silver pan in a product because that just isn't necessarily what works for most people. It may be better to set yourself a goal to use an item 10 times or to use up half of what remains in a lipstick or a foundation because you can actually mark what is in that product. But of course, some products lend themselves better to, you know, trying to actually use them up or hit pan on them. And you can be very much targeted with your goals and choose to reach for your products in a way that makes the most sense to you. And that I think is so great. I used to think that because I was project panning something, I needed to finish it up. And sometimes I would be really discouraged through my journey because I'd be like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to finish this up. Sometimes the goal of trying to use something up is just not attainable. And that is totally okay. That doesn't mean that you are not project panning, right? Because there are no rules. There is no right way to do it. I think that you really need to be easy with yourself and follow the rhythms of kind of where your mindset is and what you're feeling inspired and excited about because, you know, sometimes I put things into a project pan and I thought I was gonna use them up in like four or five months time and that time comes around and it's not done. Well, mentally, I'm over it, I'm over the product. So it's time to maybe move on from it. I can keep it in my collection, decide to bring it back into a project in the future, but there is no rule that says you need to keep it in a project until it's done or that you need to even expect or set the expectation that it is going to be done. So that is something that I've really learned to be much more easy with myself, much more forgiving, and to also understand that Makeup styles and preferences, they do come in waves for sure. And sometimes you get burnt out with things. So sometimes it's just time to move past that product and focus on something new. And through usage goals specifically, I have been able to really come to terms with that, I guess, and really come to embrace that as well. I think the last lesson kind of goes hand in hand with this next one, but I think it's something that I do need to express 
truly, because it's something that I, I think I did struggle with originally in the beginning of my project planning journey was this, um, kind of comparison within myself and in comparison to my peers, but this is the lesson. I'm in competition with no one. I am the one using my makeup. I am the one that sets the rules. And so why would I feel like I'm in competition with other people? Because that's just an arbitrary thing that I kind of put onto myself. It's a weight that I put onto myself. I think that this is something that a lot of people do struggle with through project panning is they see other people flying through their makeup products, you know, using up their pressed powders and foundations in absolutely no time, but then seeing no progress happening on their own products and feeling discouraged because of that. But you're not in competition with that person. They may wear a lot more makeup than you in terms of the amount that they actually apply, but also the frequency with which they wear makeup. They may wear makeup seven days a week, sometimes twice a day. And so how can you compare yourself to that? And I will admit it, I don't really feel like happy to admit it, but I do think for a while I was feeling like I was, you know, comparing myself and my journey with other people, seeing them rolling products out of project pans all the time and feeling like that wasn't happening for me or seeing people loving on very specific products that weren't working out for me but I'm in competition with no one. And that's something that I have tried to tell myself over the past like couple of years of project panning. Once I, once it really clicked um, that this is very much a personal journey, but in a communal space, that was really, really amazing for me. And that was quite liberating for me. And I think that that is something that a lot of people do probably feel Maybe it's hard to express. It doesn't make me feel good about myself expressing that I felt like I was comparing myself to other people. But I think in time you come to realize that there is no competition. There's only other people encouraging you and cheering you on. And while hearing other people, you know, use makeup maybe at a faster or different pace than yourself can maybe feel a little bit discouraging. I think there are just so many other variables to keep in mind while you see other people project panning versus your own experience. And that is something to really keep top of mind. This community is really not about trying to show off like I've used this more than you or whatever. It's not, it's not at all. It's a very positive space. It's truly about just sharing experiences and hopefully encouraging others to try to do the same. Although, you don't have to approach project panning at all the way that other people do. At all. It's truly all a personal experience. And this last lesson I think is probably the most important one and possibly one that I think took me the absolute longest to really, really understand. And that is that what I have does not define me. And that kind of applies to more than just makeup products. But I think through my project panning journey, I truly, truly was able to grasp that. So that could come to, you know, any number of tangible things in life. They don't define who you are. They don't define, you know, what you're capable of in any capacity. But I do think for a long time, I really, really saw myself as strictly a makeup addict, a makeup person, you know? And although I do have a lot of makeup and I do enjoy wearing makeup, that does not define who I am at my core. It doesn't at all. It actually is very much the opposite of that. It is the outward expression of who I am but who I truly am inside has nothing to do with the makeup that I own and the makeup that I use. And I really did not see the difference or distinguish the difference before for so long. I thought that a big part of who I was was, you know, I have this particular eyeshadow palette. I have this particular lipstick. That is me. And those are not me. <laughs> those are not me at all. Those are things I enjoy. Those are things I like to, you know, 
use to put myself out into the world as more of a confident and, you know, unique person, but they're not who I am. And not only do individual makeup products not define me, but the entirety of my collection also does not define me. I definitely can see that through different waves of my life, different mindsets of my life, I had amassed more or less makeup. And that was just simply a byproduct of kind of where I was at at that time. But the makeup itself is not a def definition of that mindset or the person that I was then either. It was simply a byproduct of that. And that's something that I've only really come to realize very recently, that what I have does not reflect who I am, but I can definitely change the way that I consume and the way that I wear makeup, the way that I purchase makeup to more better align with who I see myself as. It's not the opposite way around. So I've really come to realize over the last few years that I don't want to present myself as such a consumeristic kind of person, you know, somebody who really worries about what I look like and what I have. And just at the end of the day, tangible things like makeup or even, you know, the goods around you in general, they don't define who you are at all. And that's something that I'm so happy to have finally reconciled and to come to understand because the makeup collection that I have now is not a definition of who I am now, but it is a reflection of, you know, phases that I've been through in my life. And that's okay. Of course, that's okay. I enjoyed collecting makeup back in the day. It was something that really gave me a lot of value. And now I really enjoy using that makeup and finding new ways to enjoy that makeup. And that is a part of who I am, but that is not entirely who I am at all. But yeah, of course, I've learned so much more throughout the past five years, but these are really those top of mind things that I think are really important to share with others. I hope that you learned something from today's video. I really hope that it gave you a little bit more insight and maybe encourages you a little bit more for your project panning journey but that is gonna be everything for today's video. I do wanna say again, a huge thank you to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. And honestly, without all of you, I really would not be given this kind of opportunity. I am so, so grateful for all of you for spending time watching my channel and being a part of this five year project panning journey that I have found myself on. I could not imagine my life without this community and without this space and without this outlet. So. A massive thank you to all of you. Definitely go and check out the link that will be in my description box if you wanna shop Anna Luisa today. But yeah, I hope that you can take away some of these lessons and implement them into your own mindset as you continue project panning on your own. But that is everything. Thank you so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.